Rivers are incredible streams of water that flow through the road to a sea, lake, or other streams of water. Most fantasy worlds have rivers spread throughout the world, and when it comes to both real life and video games, I absolutely love rivers. Today, I want to go over what my favorite rivers across Guild Wars 2 are. Some are important for different events and tasks, some are important for fishing, and some are just super nostalgic. So let's get started. Coming in at number 10 is the Gralin Fjord River. This is a super cool river that is located in the Borealis Forest away from your foothills. This location makes up a large part of the eastern part of the forest here and has a couple of tasks along it. The most prominent one is the task at the Bear Shrine where you go into the river to collect fish to bring to the bears around the shrine. There is also an event where you kill an Ice Drake Broodmother which is a pretty simple event but is one of the most nostalgic pieces of content in the entire game for me and then, as I mentioned, there are a few other pieces of content along this river. The river itself is very pretty. It is pretty shallow, but it does get super deep at the northern end of it, where it forms a bit of a pond and also fills up the underwater tunnels that are connected to the pond. The river also goes further south from Wayfarer Foothills to a place that we have not explored yet, which I love thinking about what it may be like to visit this area of the world one day, where maybe we will have a map that is exploring this part of the road and we can travel along this river and see it going north towards Wayfarer Foothills. And the number 9 spot is the Iron Run River. Now really quickly, there are a few rivers on this list that don't really have a name, so I came up with names for them and actually had a lot of fun doing that. But this river is located in the Iron Marshes and has two forks. The western fork begins at Felmist Falls as it flows through Glade Fall Run, and the eastern fork begins at Hartson Falls and flows through both the Ebbinghart Run and Obsidian Run. The two forks then meet and flow into Lake Carnifex, which then flows into the cistern located in Fireheart Rise. I just love the design of this river where there are two waterfalls that lead to two different streams that connect to one of the lakes in the map which flows into another map as well. There are quite a few important map completion objectives along this river with waypoints, points of interest, and a vista that I'm pretty sure most people remember getting in this map because it requires you to do a tiny jumping puzzle. The eastern part of the river is a bit inhospitable because it became branded by Krakatoric, but there are parts of the eastern river and then the entire western fork are not branded and resemble the geography of Ascalon. For outside of the branded parts, this river is pretty relaxing and it's a nice place to stop in your journeys and admire the beauty of Guild Wars 2. And the number 8 spot is the Leopard's Tail Valley River. This is a small river that is located in the Frostgorge Sound and begins with a waterfall that is mostly frozen and then flows into the inland sea that makes up most of this map. This river is located in between two different pack bases that are set up in this map that have a really cool small bridge allowing pack troops and other individuals to cross the river. There's also another Ice Strike Broodmother along this river, which veteran players may recognize as being one of the champions that the old Frostgorge Sound champion loot train would come and kill back in 2013. This area of the map and the river itself is beautiful. You can tell that the river gets a little bit bigger than it currently is because there is not a lot of snow melt and it is pretty shallow right now. And I love the combination of rocks, green grass, and the snowy ground that make up this entire area. The snow-capped peaks, snowy trees, and the snow falling from the sky just add a lot of atmosphere to this area. I would say that this area and Arundin Vale are my two favorite areas in Frostgorge Sound, and this is one of my favorite rivers in the entire game. Coming in at number 7 is the River of Spirits. Now this isn't a typical river that makes up the rest of this list, because this river is actually a bunch of flowing spirits. Located in Spirit Vale, the first raid in the game, you can find this area all around the raid, where the encounters between the first and second boss have you traveling along this river as you complete the challenges, and then it surrounds the second boss of the raid before flowing to be underneath the final boss of the raid where the river plays a small part in both the second and final boss of the raid. And the river itself is super cool. I mean, the idea of what might be millions of different spirits flowing and rampaging through the land is a super cool concept. For people who don't know the lore about this place, here's a bit of a spoiler. The White Mantle are a cult of fanatics who worship the Masat and basically took complete control of Kryda. Where the White Mantle played a large part in the first campaign of the original Guild Wars, a big part of the campaign involved the White Mantle basically kidnapping people from villages around Kryda and bringing them to the Bloodstone located in the Meguma jungle, located pretty close to the Spirit Veil, where they would sacrifice Kryden civilians upon the Bloodstone in order to siphon the magic from them and empower the Mursat, trapping their souls within the Bloodstone. But with the death of Mordermoth, the magical shockwave knocked all the spirits trapped within the Bloodstone free, and now we see them roaming around the Forsaken Thicket and coalescing within the River of Spirits. And I love this story and find this environment super cool. This is also my fiance's favorite river and all of Guild Wars 2. And the number 6 spot is the Cerebuth River. This is a super cool river that flows through a large part of the Kessex Hills. It originates from the cave where the Collapsed Observatory Jumping Puzzle is located and flows out of the mouth of that cave northwards. It reaches the Cerebuth Falls which is absolutely beautiful. This is an incredible spot in the Kessex Hills and the vista here is awesome to watch. 
but then the river continues flowing northwards as it goes past Blackhaven and then ends at Blackroot Cut. There's a decent amount of content spread throughout this river, especially in the northern end of the map, where the task here has you doing a bunch of stuff in the river, and then there are a variety of map completion objectives spread throughout. Then of course, there's a jumping puzzle that has you jumping past the source of the river, but a really cool part about this river that I personally love is how it guides you to Garenhof, where following along the river and then continuing through the valley is one of the main ways to get to Garenhof, and it's how I originally discovered this town for the first time back in the day. In the number 5 spot is the Maguma Shallows. This is a river located in Oryk Basin, the second map from the Heart of Thorns expansion. This river originates in the northeastern part of Oryk Basin, with a waterfall coming down from the mountains near the Burnisher Quarry and through the rocks at the northernmost end of this river. The entire stream here is super cool as it flows down towards the center of Oryk Basin, going down a waterfall and through a tunnel before it eventually reaches Trier and comes pouring down in a giant waterfall that drops into the city and continues to fall below the city towards a small underground lake next to the sealed passageway. This river is just super cool and I love all the different waterfalls across it. I mean all the waterfalls within the city of Trier itself are super cool and this is one of them. The river itself is beautiful and of course it's located in Orc Basin which is my favorite map in the entire game. All the areas around here are absolutely gorgeous and running along this river is just a great experience. There's also part of the Northwatch meta event that has you doing stuff in the shallows here with a cool story surrounding it. This location just has a decent amount of importance alongside being absolutely beautiful. And the number 4 spot is the Jest River. This is a massive river found in the Maguma jungle that flows through the entirety of the Metrica province. Now I'm not a river expert, but there might be three rivers here, but it might be considered the same exact river. Where there is one river that begins at the Jestar Falls and flows north through Loch Jest and into the lake and marsh in central Metrica. Then there is a second one that is coming into the western side of the map from deeper into Maguma which connects to the first river. Then there is a third river that begins at Mount Nashington in the Brisbane Wildlands and flows into the Metrica province over a waterfall and south to the lake and marsh. I think there is also a fourth river in the map that also flows to the marsh area of this map from the eastern side of the map. I'm sure there is some river expert that could explain this, but for the purposes of this list, let's just talk about the entire stream that flows through the entirety of the map. It's pretty cool. There's a ton of stuff along this river, and because it makes up the entirety of the zone, you tend to cross it multiple times. There are a ton of bridges, the two waterfalls at either end are beautiful, and traveling along the river is a great experience. I love this area with the introduction of skiffs and fishing with the Ender Dragons expansion, where I've definitely spent a lot of time going up and down this river on my skiff to catch different fish. It's just overall a pretty good river. Coming in at number 3 is the Queensdale River. The situation going on here is pretty similar to the Jest River we just talked about, where I'm not entirely sure where the river begins and ends, where there are two giant lakes that border Divinity's Reach, Lake Doric and Lake Regent, where both of these lakes are dammed and no water is currently going through them in-game. But there's also the Clant Falls that are a waterfall in the southwestern corner of the map that feeds into this river, where I think all three sources of this river, especially Clant Falls, flows through the entire map of Queensdale and feeds into Lake Delavan and the God's Lost Swamp. And again, just like the last river, I'm sure a river expert could clarify what exactly is going on here, but for the extents of this list, let's just talk about all the rivers in Queensdale, where all the rivers in this map are beautiful. They sprawl all across the map, there are several different events and tasks that have you going into the rivers, and there are even some good fishing spots. I love all the incredible buildings and bridges you can find throughout. I mean the Shamor Bridge is incredible, but there are several, like Otterbrook Crossing, that are also incredible. Shamor Garrison is built on an island surrounded by the rivers which makes it a moat, and I just don't think the map of Queensdale would be as cool as it is without these rivers. In the number 2 spot is Gentle River. This is an absolutely gorgeous river that spans the entirety of western Timberline Falls. It passes through an incredible valley that goes from Krongar Pass and then feeds into a swampland area near the Talus Waterslide, where some other rivers are also connected to. Gentle River starts at a beautiful waterfall, and the entire area around here is one of my favorite locations in the entire game. Timberline Falls itself is one of my favorite maps in the original release of Guild Wars 2. I love exploring through this area and just taking in all of the incredible views, where following Gentle River will give you a great view of the lands itself. You also have some pretty cool locations alongside this place. You got Valence Tuturi, which is a cool Assyrian lab, but is probably most known for being the location that people group up to fight the legendary Leyline Anomaly world boss. Where with that, you got some farming spots that people come to mine ore and stuff while waiting for the boss, and then there's also a chance you will fight the boss along the river. You also got Concordia, which is an important location for multiple parts of the Gilders 2 story, and then at the end of the river, you have Care Evermore, which is a really cool pact and Savari fort. But I just think with everything, this river is just gorgeous and runs through an incredibly beautiful area, which is why it is number 2 on my list. 
And now for the number one spot, for my favorite river in the entire game, and it has to go to the Elone River. This is a river that can mostly be found in the Elone Riverlands, an entire map named after the river, but it can also be found in other maps as well, where the river itself is giant and starts north of Vabi, then runs west and northwest towards Central Tyria. You have the Bay of Elone located in the Crystal Oasis, as well as Transcendent Bay located in the Desert Highlands, which connects to the Elone River. And then the river continues past the Scavenger's Causeway and towards the Steamsphere Mountains as well as Or. Where along the eastern coast of Or, you have the Sea of Elone, and then there is the Meyer Sea and the Steamsphere Mountains, which might technically be a part of the Elone River as it goes towards the Labyrinthine Cliffs. Additionally, the river flows south from its source that flows through the entirety of Elona, through Vabi, into Korna, and into the Undending Ocean being a large part of the three different maps of the Domain of Abbey, Jahai Bluffs, and the Domain of Kurna. And where all of that is a lot, this is a huge river, probably the biggest river in the entire game, but when we look at the map of the Elone Riverlands, the river makes up the bottom third of the entire map, where there are a ton of different map completion objectives all around this area, alongside huge events and super important lore locations. This is also the location where you get the Skimmer Mount in the game, which is great because then you can travel along the river in a super fun way. I love all the waterfalls that feed into the Elone River, both in the Elone Riverlands as well as the Desolation, and then the river itself is just gorgeous. I love all the lush areas around here as it provides a water source in the Crystal Desert. But beyond how important this location is for gameplay, how beautiful it is, and how massive of a river it is, this river is probably the most lore important river in the entire game, where originally the southern fork of the river was the only one that existed, where it flowed from its source north of Abbey and all the way through Korna but Palawajoko dammed the start of the river and diverted it through the Crystal Desert, creating the fork we see today. Where this was great for the Crystal Desert, aside from the fact that it destroyed Odam Noon and other settlements, but it threw Vabi and Korna into a famine as the people of those nations relied on the river to grow food, allowing a perfect opportunity for Palawajoko to dominate those two nations. Yet with the Path of Fire expansion, Krakatorx's flight south through Elona broke the dams that Joko had built, allowing the river to flow south again through Korna but the westward stream still exists. I would love to be able to travel to the source of this river in a new zone and see what Palawa Joko and Krakatoric did to this area. And it could be a part of a smaller story with helping the people of Elona because this river is incredibly important to them. And it is just a no-brainer for me with everything combined, the incredible lore and story here, how important this river is and how huge it is as it travels through a large part of the world, how beautiful the river itself is and all the important things we do along it. The Elone River is my favorite river and all of Guild Wars 2. And that's my list. I hope you enjoyed it. I am by no means a river expert, but I think they are pretty. And I love the rivers of Guilders 2 and how important they are for the various zones they are in. And then rivers like the Elone River having such a high importance to the lore and story of the game are a huge plus. I hope you all are taking good care of yourselves. Have a good one everyone.